This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And we are cultivating habits. We are learning that spiritual formation is really about habit formation. Habits are a great gift from God. They don't need to be a burden to us. They get, get us in trouble when sin gets in them. And today I want to talk to you about uh, another one of my favorite verses in the Bible. This is Joshua, the first chapter, verse 9, where God says to Joshua, Be courageous. Be very strong. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For I, the Lord your God, will be with you wherever you go. And I love that command. I love that thought. I love that promise. Today, don't live in discouragement or fear. Paul says to Timothy, for the spirit that God gave us is not a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of strength, power, and self-control. But now the question is, how do we live that way? How do I develop the habit, the orientation of living with confidence and trust in God? And here's one of the most important statements I have ever heard when it comes to how do you actually change this? I think it was from Dallas. I saw it years and years ago. The will is transformed by experience, not information. The will, and because we're embodied, that actually means our bodies, our um, immediate responses to things, the thoughts that just habitually run through us, is transformed not by information. One of the great problems we have is we think that information alone will bring about transformation. And this often happens in churches. People think if you just hear enough sermons or you just read enough Bible passages over and over, then it will bring about transformation. One of the uh, illustrations that I'll sometimes use to demonstrate this is when our kids were little, I would take them to a camp where they had a ropes course. And before you would go out on the ropes course, you would have a little orientation session and you would be given information. And they would talk about the ropes and about the clamps, the carabiners, the harnesses, and how much pressure they could hold. So it was very, very clear you were safe. When you were up there on the ropes course, you were always strapped in. You were always tied up to stuff. Before you ever said on belay, you, you could know for sure that you would be perfectly safe. And when you were down in that class receiving the information, you were quite convinced you were. Until you got up there 30 feet above the ground and you looked down below and it turns out that there were parts of me that did not believe I was safe. My armpits did not believe I was safe. And the palms of my hands did not believe that I was safe. Now, here's what's really important as we think about transformation. I could have sat down in that class a hundred times and listened to those same bits of information. I could have memorized them. I could have given that lecture and that would not have convinced my body that I was safe when I was up in the ropes course. There is a way to do that. There were kids that were working up on that ropes course and they had great ease and they were very relaxed and their armpits believed they were safe. And What did they do? Well, they actually did the ropes course over and over and over again. And as they did it, they actually experienced that they were safe, and they came to believe it with their whole bodies. One of the ways to understand spiritual formation is it is to come to believe with my whole body what I think I believe right now in my mind. And one of the great problems in the church is that we will, in certain traditions, think if you just explain to people over and over and over enough, here's the gospel, then they will live in grace, or then they will live in courage. Kent Dunnington writes about this, actually one of the disputes apparently between Socrates and Aristotle was that Socrates just simply thought if you had enough education about what was true, then because you're rational, you will live it out. What Aristotle recognized is there's a difference between what we sometimes called head knowledge and what we sometimes call heart knowledge or you might think about as embodied knowledge. Uh, embodied knowledge is the knowledge that those workers had up on those ropes course because they had done the ropes course. They were ropes disciples. You don't have to be a good disciple. There was a probably 12 year old girl when we were going through that and the ropes course normally would take maybe 10 or 15 minutes to go through it. There was the plank part, the tightrope part, and the leap of courage and uh, zip line. And, and it took her an hour and a half to go through it. She was screaming the whole time. She wasn't a good disciple. That's okay. You don't have to be a good disciple. When she would experience that over and over, then she would come to believe. You come to trust. Confidence. Be strong and courageous. See, that's embodied knowledge. How do we grow that? 
This is from Ezra Sullivan's book, Habits and Holiness. So interesting. He says, when a sheep sees a wolf, he will run away consistent with his instinct. Animals live by instinct. When a shepherd sees a wolf, he might be conquered by fear and run away, or he might follow his reason, which tells him that protecting sheep is good, and choose to fight the wolf. In the long run, the shepherd's emotional judgments, embodied responses, will come to be shaped by his choices. After a series of victories over wolves, he will gradually experience less and less fear in future confrontations. When we make choices and we go through experiences, see, they are marked, they are carried in our bodies, in our synapses, which get wired one way or another. God, that's part of the gift of our little kingdoms, our little bodies. I was struck by that particular analogy as I thought about a story. Now be strong, be courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. But now you can hear that a hundred times. Good to hear it a hundred times. Good to memorize it. But the invitation where life gets changed is when I come to believe it with my whole body. There's a story about that that you probably are familiar with. There was a young boy named David, and he was talking to a King Saul because there was a terrifying enemy named Goliath. And David said, I'm going to fight him. And Saul said, you can't. You're just a boy. David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, rescued the sheep from its mouth. Just the situation that Solomon was talking about. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. And then this next statement, because now... Uh, David didn't just experience deliverance from uh, the wolf and the lion. He reflected on it. He thought about who it was that delivered him. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Remarkable story. And thinking about habits, you might remember that Saul said, okay, go ahead and put his armor on. Saul and David walked around it in the armor. And uh, he tried walking around them because he, and his comment was, I cannot go in these because I am not used to them. So he took a little slingshot and five stones because he had the habit of using them. He understood about his habits. And he reflected on how God was with him. And he came to believe with his whole body, see. Be strong. Be very courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. But now we need the ropes course. The ropes course is a way of life where we can experience God's presence together with us. That's where habits get changed. And I know, I know, I know, it can be frustrating, stultifying, unhelpful to some have some person outside you tell you, you have to do these habits or you can't feel good about your spiritual life. And that may be quite oppressive. But it remains true that we only change at the deepest level when our embodied knowledge gets changed. And that happens through experience, not just information. Information is critical. I got to know the carabiners are safe and the ropes will hold me. I got to know that the Lord my God is with me. Somebody must tell me that information is, is critical, but it's not sufficient. Transformation comes by experience. So today, I want to invite you to take one step, just one little thing, make it tiny, because habits are built in tiny ways, where you step outside your comfort zone, you get up on the ropes course, you do something that scares you a little bit, and you are able to invite God into it with you, and you are able to actually do it. So now again, make this small. What's something that you have been avoiding? Maybe the emails are piling up, and you're going to get one email done uh, in the next hour, just a, a step in that direction. Um, maybe there is a conversation that you have been avoiding hap uh, having, and so you're going to have it today. Or if that's too overwhelming, you're going to schedule it today. Or if that's too overwhelming, you're going to tell another person about that today and get their wisdom on it. Maybe you've been afraid to look at your finances, 
And so you're going to open up the computer and take a look at maybe you have been afraid about something going on with your body. And so today you're going to schedule an appointment with a doctor. Maybe you have been afraid to apply for a job and today you're going to find a tiny little first step to be able to do that. Maybe you're afraid about something that's been going on at school. Today you're going to take one tiny little step to look at that class that has been scaring you. It's a ropes course deal. We want to come to believe with our whole bodies and that actually is possible. And that's what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Now, I begin to step into my actual life to take tiny little habits one at a time where if I want to become courageous or I want to become generous or I want to become patient, I look at, I ask God to help me to design the ropes course through which I can experience his presence and come to believe with my whole body. Because love is habit for me. Hi, I'm Tim. Thanks for joining us. You mean so much to us as a community, and we hope that this series helps you build some new habits in your life to help you grow spiritually one day at a time. And we want to hear from you throughout this series. If you have questions, you can put them in the comment box wherever you're watching, or you can email us or text us. And at the end of the series, we're going to sit down with John and talk about some of your questions. For more resources, you can visit becomenew.me. And to spread the word, you can hit subscribe, share this video with a friend, or give us a review on podcasts wherever you're listening. We'll see you next time.